welcome to the Mad Trio podcast. This week we have the California pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the fat man, Stevens, hello, Rob, the old guy, from the world's famous Rob Charney show, and holy shit, he makes again, it's Ryan Preston. What? Who? Where? Our guest. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's always great to see James's face when he says, hello. Hello. <laughs> He doesn't quite look like the guy who originally said that, though. He's um, not the right hair color. No, not the right, not the right cheek up. puffiness, either. <laughs> not the right cheek puffiness, And huh? probably one of the saddest things I have to report is one of my all-time favorite wrestlers just passed away, to, just passed away today. William Hurt. Scott Hall, <laughs> Razor Ramon, died oh, okay. today. He actually died from complications from hip surgery. Uh, he had what? hip surgery. There were three blood clots. I ended up giving him three heart uh, attacks, and they oof. pulled him off life support today. It lasted about an hour oh. or two, last reports. Wow. What a shame. That sucks. Uh, yeah, he was um, legendary uh, as a wrestler. He was one of the founders of the, the, the stable New World Order, NWO, and I don't know, just a very got, beloved uh, wrestler. I got respect for, you know, as much as I don't watch wrestling anymore, I, I got respect for anybody that puts their body on the line like that for the sake of people's entertainment. Hmm, maybe it's for the sake of their pocket, but... I mean, there's that too. <laughs> All right. So, the, the, you know, the most crazy thing is back when they were in it, there were no territories. Not really. Actually, no, when there were whole, not a whole lot of territories, so the money was limited. They weren't making a whole lot of money back in that day. It wasn't until uh, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash jumped to WCW where they started making millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where they had to find the money because they weren't getting money otherwise. Oh, not at all. Yeah. So John's favorite uh, musician ever um, is going to bow out of being a rock and roll hall of fame. No, oh, Dolly. Yeah. Dolly, just yeah, yeah, Dolly yeah, Parton heard. says that she doesn't want the votes to be split up because of her. Well, that's let's so be honest. Bowed out of being uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. She's not rock and Wait, roll. Wait, she bowed out of being inducted into the Hall of Fame for what reason? Rock and roll Hall of Fame. Oh, because she didn't <laughs> want to split up the votes between um, other people that have been nominated. But she's not rock and roll. Of course, NWA's she in there. And they're not rocking. I mean, either. damn, the amount of stuff that, that that she wrote that that became, you know, she she really transcended a particular genre. And and you know, goddamn, I mean, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is is definitely branched away from uh, what you and I would consider, you know, rock and roll as a genre. But I mean, you figured that she's she's one of those first round ballot Hall of Famers shoe in. Yeah. But I, uh, I wonder if she turned it down before because the fact she's not in it now is being probably one of the most prolific songwriters in the history of music, at least in modern no times. Kidding. I mean, it, there's people that have bowed out of becoming, uh, you know, knighted by the queen. Yeah. You know, people that could have been sirs that are like, nah, you can keep it. I'm good. Thanks. That's a power move. <laughs> I mean, I, I might do yeah. the same if she ever asked me. I mean, right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'd, I'd totally say yes to it. I mean, hey, <laughs> how much money does it come with? How much land? I think it comes with a couple of how like you know, good tables at the, at the uh, fish at and the restaurants. Hall, you know, yeah, yeah, right. that's yeah, that's probably yeah. all you get. Yeah. You don't yeah. get a whole lot of anything else. Get, so, get some extra fish and chips when I go over there. You know, I, I yeah. don't know. I, you would think that you know, the monarch was hurting for all this money. You think she might. You know, shill a few of those sir things, but you know you have to be British for some reason. She can yeah. do that. And say, hey, <laughs> so here's pay me an X amount of dollars, and you too can be a sir. So here's a right. A, yeah. Here's a quick. I made my girlfriend a uh, a lady. There you go. Did you buy a little square inch of? Yeah, she's got like a like yeah. a like a foot. You know, whatever square. A wait, foot. wait. Uh, she, so she got downgraded. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's pretty exactly. fucked. Yeah, yeah, she's a, a lady of Scotland. Well, I mean, first she was your, you know, Ooh. first she was your girlfriend. Then you said fiance. Then now she got downgraded back to your girlfriend. I think you, <laughs> I think you're an oh, apology. You, it's, uh... <laughs> He's just Long still getting of, used to it's saying so that. It's so interchangeable nowadays. Like I've, I've just flat out for the sake of not wanting to get into the, uh, 
to the to the discussion just started calling her a wife you know <laughs> there you um, go really just it just stops a lot of questions like like oh my fiance <laughs> they're like oh when are you getting married i'm like i didn't bring this up to get into the conversation about it man wait wait until people start bringing up so when y'all gonna pop out a couple of kids oh yeah well you know i i still get them from uh from my mom <laughs> so here so i got a quick listicle we're talking about dolly parton who said no to uh the rock and roll hall of fame so Here's are a we just of... like stealing that from rob now i mean is well, that what this we're is... doing i mean we did it all last week well I mean... yes well this i'm stealing this one because this is an interesting kind of obvious list so it's my rocks mi- my rock mixtapes.com so just He's quickly still in my stick. i am so go, it's the go figure the I... sex pistols ozzy osbourne okay what is this list again this is a list of people. Let me get back to the head. Artists who refuse Sorry, to be inducted to into all. the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> who refuse? Who refuse. Okay. refuse. So the Sex Pistols. Not really yeah. surprised. No, that's punk rock. That's just Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. Uh, Axl Rose. I'm actually surprised they'd let him in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, considering he's a world-renowned jackass. I mean, a lot of world-renowned jackasses are probably in the Hall of Fame. But how many started a riot? <laughs> Probably a couple. Probably a couple. <laughs> True. Well, according to this list, those are the two or three. So out of that's it. Yeah, apparently it's a quick list. Ozzy Osbourne's was just take our name off the list, save the ink, forget about us. The nomination is meaningless because it's not voted on by the fans. It's voted on by the supposed elite for the industry and media who oh, never shit. bought an album or concert ticket in their lives. So their vote is Damn. irreverent to me. Let's face it, Black Sabbath has never been the media darling. <laughs> I, I just yeah. I just prefer the uh, the the Groucho Marx uh, uh, take on it. I I wouldn't want to be a part of any club that would have me as a member. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. This is why you're a guest <laughs> now, Ryan. <laughs> so you can feel invited. Uh, all right. Uh, I got this one for for uh, James. Okay. All right, James. <clears throat> as I have to clear my throat for this. Food fast facts. Food fast. Right, here facts. we go. Okay. Okay. Who invented chocolate milk? William Hurt. <laughs> That's going to be the answer for everything today. Chuck oh, Berry. I'm going to beat that joke to death. So, William <laughs> Hurt. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Daniel Peter, who sold the concept to his neighbor, Henry Nestle. So he sold it to him. Yeah. Well, that's no. nice. I mean, he could have just been, you know, at a barbecue one weekend, and he's like, "I got this idea for chocolate milk," and he's like, "Chocolate milk." I, I yeah. bet to it. I bet it came Henry to him. Probably off, did that. I bet I it know, came to him know, awfully yeah. quickly. <laughs> Nestle's quick. Good job, John. I know. Wow. wow. <laughs> but then he spelled it wrong. Everyone made fun of him for it, and he just stuck to it. I fuck, he just yeah. keep fucking doubled down. He's man. like, "This is what we're gonna do now." My <laughs> my my superpower is the the inability to spell and killing conversations faster than a speeding bullet. So fuck yeah, <laughs> an improper grammar. Wait, what kind of bullet? <laughs> so, uh, uh, what was the original name for a fork? A broken. Knife? Okay, everybody got fork. <laughs> split. I have spoon. no idea. Split spoon. Split a spoon. Split spoon. Yeah. So I guess the right. spoon was invented before the fork. Hey, give me one then of them cut, broken spoons. They, yeah, they 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 cut some slits into a spoon, and then it was a split spoon, and somehow it became a fork. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. Y'all, would you give me what, one of those fancy it, slits? Supposed spoons? when a uh, is it supposed when a when a fork was like invented? Yeah, well, so that was the whole idea. I guess we all started with spoons first, and you know, it was probably a hollowed out branch. <laughs> sure said, yeah right yeah, no so doubt. then probably the wood got split at some time and it looked like it had a split in it and they kind of went oh that's not bad for sticking things and, you know who knows yeah. i'm not a caveman I, yeah i was born with forks so. i guess it, i guess it really would be man it was kind of a stupid fucking question it would be like a caveman thing like you're sitting there with like like one kind of big flat piece of board and then your yeah. buddy comes and sits down next to you and he's got like this like try you right. know uh forked uh, uh piece of stick and he's you look over and you're like dude i want to get one of those and you yeah. go to the first tree you find start snapping that's right <laughs> that was good. He says where do i patent it where is that fancy yeah. sp- where is that fancy spoon <laughs> oh i could see we got some more here hmm. so what did where did we get the term from melba toast for what? what? Melba toast? Oh, come on, James. What the hell is You're that? You're a chef. 
You don't know about the Wasn't Coast. that like a prison food? And it actually started by an Australian opera singer by the name of uh, Nellie Melba. So and prison she invented food. invented this toast. There's an actual type of toast <laughs> that's it? made. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking toast. about. You James, know, this one's I right. didn't know there was a freaking name for it. And yeah. Most of the time, they call it bruschetta. So well, there you go. Here's, yeah, here's, the here's the directions. Here's the directions. Toast the bread slices on both sides. Onto the grill or use a bread toaster. No, it's just the, it's more like a dried one. They, Cut off the they crust. They basically put it in an oven and really, really make it toasty, toasty. <laughs> toasty, That's toasty. That's pretty much what it is. It. Yeah. So it's yeah. like a dried No, it's not cheddar. dried. It's not air dried. Right. John, there's there's a it's whole just... difference between stale and that was, that dried was, toasty. That was, that, that was Ryan who said that, not me. Uh-huh. I was reading the directions. And you were reading the wrong directions. I prefer fried matzah. Oh my anyways. god, why do people say what is Melba toast made of? <laughs> well, toast. <laughs> I, I had to Google it because I'd never heard the term. Yeah, I'm I'm still a little unclear. It, it sounds exactly like it's, Melba toast is. most it's of the time I would have heard it as Christini or something there you uh, go. or a French term rather rather than an English term, which is what Rob used. <clears> right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know the Australians can't fucking just call anything by its actual name. It's always got to be like cutesy. The yeah, British, the like British Vegemite, are the same way. Marmite. Bullshit. Oh, anyway. go, on, go on, Rob. So what are you saying about like Melba toast? Wedgie or something? Yeah, too. we, we looked at Melba wedgie. toast. And I was looking, you know, looking at this list. And so the number one complaint for fruits, although really a banana is not a fruit, right? A banana is. No, it is. I guess it's a fruit yeah, bananas after fruit. tomatoes. But anyway, uh, most people complain. That's the number one thing that most people complain about in grocery stores are bananas. And why is that? Because of the spots on the banana. But a banana so, isn't ripe and sweet until it has the spots. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, like so Peter Falk. Complain. He wasn't sweet until he got all the liver spots <laughs> on his head. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's, <laughs> when he, that's when you knew he was ripe. Ooh. Yeah. And I'm surprised nobody's eating Peter Falk. And and half the people well, are going. You could be Ooh. the first. I could. He's dead, right? Did Peter Falk die? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I actually don't know. Did he? I think so. I think some. Pretty years sure died. he's dead. <laughs> but I apologize well, to Peter yeah. Falk. Hold on, I only have one eye. around there somewhere. <laughs> yes, he's he's. I'm pretty sure he is dead. All yeah, right. How many be. snails are served annually? Oh, 2011. How many sir? Snails are served annually. I'd say half a million. That a sounds billion. about right. I, a I billion? Know. A billion snails are served. A annually. billion. Wow. A billion. That's got to be more in, I wouldn't say France, but, you know, I know there's other. Europe. I think it's that, more common. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's crazy. Well, I guess, I mean, like, I know that when I actually ate escargot that I actually liked, I ate probably about 20 of them. I mean, they oh, are yeah. small. And now, yeah, look, so. escargot, uh, it falls under the same category for me as crab and lobster, which, listen, I get people want to tell me I love crab and lobster. I look at them dead in their dumb faces and say, you like butter. You just need a delivery system for that butter. And it just happens to be crab and lobster. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying what you like is butter. So just just for for to, to back up a little bit, Peter Falk died in 2011, and uh, Telly Sol uh, Telly died in '94. Just to, so we can cover all the, the famous detectives. Okay. Oh, okay. '94. That was a long time ago. All right, let's try this one. This one would have, have to be done with your nose held. It says that an onion, an apple, a potato all have the same taste. <laughs> the difference in flavor is caused drink. by their smell. Hmm. Hold the damn phone. <laughs> I'll be. You gotta go try that. <laughs> right. it's gonna go... <laughs> Hold on. I gotta legit write that down. What was that again? All right. <laughs> so, an, an onion, an apple, and a potato. An onion, all an have apple, and a potato. <laughs> all right. Everybody's running to the refri their refrigerators to go. <laughs> No, I'm not. No, I, no. I'm not going to play this game. Is, I, is I don't believe it. Is um, I well, you better believe I'm going to bite the potato before I get to 
you know, if, oh, a, no, no. if a potato tastes the same as the apple, then so I my, might try to take a bite out of an onion. I guess my question is with this thing is, so even if you hold your nose, you still have a sense of smell. That's what palate, I was just right? about to ask. Is so the, how the hell olfactory would you ever... sense exactly. still not just if you hold your nose? You'd have to find somebody that has absolutely no sense of smell. But so, also has a sense of yeah. taste. How, how connected are they if you hold your nose? You know, I don't know. But isn't that an, that's an odd one. I I don't know. I, I don't really believe that. I really don't. You yeah, don't, don't believe, believe So it. you're going to challenge no. this one. All right. James challenged. I say that one is, is false news. The fast facts you challenged. <laughs> Fake I mean, news. I, I'm imagining biting into an, to a, to an onion, and I can taste that that strong onion. You know, they in my head. So my thought right off the bat is, what kind of onion are they talking about? Because the, there's onions, like you said, that you are, are fake news. Strong. Yeah, I mean, white onion, smell, but red onion, onion got a real distinct flavor you are to fake them, news. and I don't think that has anything to do with my nose. No, yeah, I mean, I could see the apple and potato. I mean, damn, no, nah, man, because the, the apple's got sugar in it. It's got natural. No, no, sugars. I'm saying, well, so does a potato. Why do potato you think it's brown? Potato has to starch that gets turned into sugar. Yeah, hello. But this. it's not sugar oh, on I'm your just tongue. Saying, Where's Julia you Child eaten? when you need her? <laughs> well, she has a sense of smell. Well, she did. And she. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying she probably smells still. Uh, geez, <laughs> That's one. That, <laughs> <that's laughs> <funny. laughs> I'm not going to argue that. I mean, there's probably some truth to it. Just depends on how you take it. Um. So what I'm saying is, like, I, I could see. The, I mean, I've I've bitten into a raw potato, and there's a s small amount of sweetness still to it. Now, an onion, you know, I guess it does have a good amount of sugars in it too, because you get caramelized onions. So if right. you take it, right, right. So is, I, is I don't know. I just I just don't think. Yeah, that sugar does caramelize. That's why you have caramelized onions. That's one of the flavors that you get it from is from the sugars in the in right. the onion, and it takes a while to cook it down and get it to caramelize properly. And for idiots out there, burning an onion is not caramelizing an onion. <laughs> There's a total different way to do it, and you have to heat it up properly, idiots. Anyways, um, yeah, I, now I burn me a few going. onions in the day, idiots. Um, so um, yeah, I just, I just don't think the onion would. I don't think the onion's gonna. Do it. I just, I, I just don't I, see it. Yeah, yeah I, that's yeah. so. Uh, uh, potato an apple, and apple. Potato? I can see. Throw the onion out of it. Yeah, I agree. So that's a strange, but but they're saying it's true. But hey, you know, we can challenge the fast facts here. I'm good with that. I didn't. But the thing is, is if you literally throw away your sense of smell, if you get rid of the sense of smell completely, that's where I'm like, maybe it could. Yeah, but. Um, I just, I'm not I mean, going you know, I, I, I go really to a genius and say, get rid of my sense of smell because I got to debunk this shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That is not going to be one of my monkey's paw wishes. That's for damn so, damn so sure. I, I, yeah, think, so. I think Rob needs to go on next on the list before this becomes half an hour of debating which one tastes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A couple of this one's real quick here. Uh, Jeez. So, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you threw me off. Oh, shoot, dudes. All right. <laughs> when was the first year aluminum cans were invented for sodas? Aluminum I'm go for with sodas? 1979. For, for sodas. Aluminum No, 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 no. For, oh, for, for sodas. For specifically oh, shit. sodas. Not 1960. Yeah. I'm saying later because it was for beer. But you're saying specifically sodas. So, so aluminum cans, right. Uh, what year were they introduced? 65 for I'd go no 70 no i'd say i'd say more where john's at either no i'd because i know my parents had them because they were talking about the eight ounce cans i mean and i'm remembering the old before school, i was old born tab that you just tore right. right off and you threw out All it right. wasn't attached to the thing i mean that had to be so i'm saying 70s okay. i'm saying mid 70s all right, everybody had a guess on that one. Believe it or not, it's a lot earlier than even I thought. It's 1957. Really? Oh, wow. 1957. Well, who was the first one, Coke? Well, so, yes, Coke was. And then two years later, Coke introduced not only regular Coke, but they introduced a Diet Coke. Uh, and the new Coke. And uh, uh, 1959 
which I had no idea. I, I imagine people opening them tab. up with those like like things that you used to open like like tomato right? sauce cans with, you know. Yeah. Just <laughs> you drank. Yep, that's the way beers were. And then and then so the pull tab <laughs> line that you talked about, what year was it invented? So the so I was actually just making a joke. The original can legit you had to like pop open with the your own little tab separate where you pulled tool. it all the way off. The tab came all the way off, not the ones that we have now. See, that's what I was thinking, and that's why I was thinking maybe like mid to late sixties. Um maybe well, 70, 1970 at the latest. So actually those started coming out in nineteen sixty two. Oh. Which I don't remember seeing anywhere near in my childhood. In, you know. So before the original pull tab, did you actually have to have like that separate tool? Yeah. Key. No shit. I yes. was literally just making a joke about like no, old things. That's the way because I remember my dad opening his beer cans. It was always with with the can opener. Why it was called a can opener. So you had like that big one that you punched in, and then you put the little exactly. small one as the air hole behind it, right? Right. Wow. Yep. So. All right, so that was enough of my trivia for that part. Fast fact. I mean, were those were cans just invented? I mean, seriously, just for stacking purposes? Because that seems like what it was. No, I, I think cans were originally designed because of preservation to preserve foods. Sure, that yeah. was the main reason for for cans. But I know, you know, you know cans are designed. I mean, you can stack them 30, 40 pallets high, and you know they they line up their their structure. Right. So they don't. You know, I, I agree. I, I'm sure that was an added benefit. I mean, you know, think you know, about you how much remember. easier it is to uh, uh, swing around uh, uh, some boxes of cans versus bottles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and the other thing is I don't think can sizes were universal. I, you know, we, that'd be another fact we, we would have to look up and figure out. when. Yeah, they, they probably were. weren't universal at first, but I know my parents were talking about that most of the cans that they knew when they were when they were growing up were eight ounce cans so i think they went for you know an eight ounce cup size for the drink sizes back then and they were saying you know that was enough for them to drink it during their meals or whatever and i was kind of like okay because i mean they went up to 10 and 12 which most of the can sizes now are 12 ounces yeah right so that's kind of where they were saying, you know, they remember that they all used to be eight ounce cans. It, yeah, it really did do everybody a disservice with the larger cans. You know, I, th- this is a 20 ounce Red Bull. <laughs> I shouldn't have been able to buy this. Really? That, that that's the hill you're going to die on? You're, I don't want to be able to. That That's that's come on. No, no it's I mean, not, it's no, not at all. I'm just saying like like if it didn't exist, we, I wouldn't have bought it. No, you would have bought two of everything. everything. You would have bought two We've of We've oversized them. our serving sizes. Every, everything's yeah. been oversized. It didn't matter. Yeah. It's the way we went. So, I blame yeah. it on jumbo fries. <laughs> yeah, so, man. guess is what? Yeah. So, guess what's speaking ha- of knights, have you heard that Sir Ernest Shackleton, the crew that doomed of the their doomed break. expedition in the Antarctica, yeah, the their ship was found. Really? They found their. They found the endurance. endurance. No shit. I remember yeah, reading yeah. that book back in the, the day, poem? man. Lost in 1915. Amazing. Yeah, dude. yeah. It was it a crazy found, ass book. Found off the coast of yeah. Antarctica. And wow. it's actually perfectly. Uh, it's not perfectly, but it's really well preserved because of the icy waters. It's amazing how well wow. preserved. Yeah. It was. I was so, looking at the. Poem. Yeah, I was looking at the pictures. It's really cool. So the pr- really cool. So here's a quote: "The preservation is beyond imagination," said Mensum Bound, the director of exploration at the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust. Yeah. So John pulled that up really fast. Is this one that you had in your? Uh... No, I have. I have a list of things. Don't, don't, don't you worry. Okay. Over a century after it sank to the depths of the Weddell Sea, that's W E D D E L L C off the coast of Antarctica, the last ship of the Anglo Irish explorer Ernest Shackleton has been found. In 1915, the endurance was trapped by dense packed ice, forcing Shackleton and his crew to make a stunning escape. Now, 107 years later, the wooden vessel has been located, and it's virtually intact, which is amazing. Why is the goddamn picture in black and white? <laughs> the, the, oh, here it is in the water. Okay. Because the it's a it's from 1915. I mean, really that we found this old ship. Quick, somebody grab me an old timey camera. 
<laughs> wow, that dude that is nutty. It's beautiful, he said. He added that it had he had never never ever okay, never ever seen a wreck as beautiful as this. In 30 oh, years, he spent working on shipwrecks. It just doesn't get any better dude, than this. Look at that. That is the Isn't it cool? Endurance, man. Isn't it cool? <laughs> and, so cool. And and everybody younger than the old guy is like, what? No, man. He's like, I, I remember when this ship went down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so, so I told him to not to go that route. Am. So the craziest <laughs> thing is, my my grandfather was a young was young when this ship was lost. He was very young. So that that's that amazes me. Damn. One grandfather wasn't even born yet. <laughs> Just so you know, nineteen it said nineteen fifteen, when it was lost. Dude, that is the endurance. That's <laughs> trippy, <laughs> man. Oh, well, that's that is fair. an amazing shape. That's freaky. It was lost in nineteen fifteen. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So something man, is they happening. Don't make boats like that anymore. Go ahead, John. Go. Something go. is happening. That's the first time it's happened since the first dot com bust. Guess what it is. According to GeekWire.com, Amazon board approves a 20 for 1 stock split. It's the first since before the dot com bust. So, what do you think? Huh. Amazon board has approved the company's first stock split in more than 20 years. Subject to shareholder approval for the 20, 20 for 1 split, would reevaluate uh, Amazon's individual shares. I mean, to make them more affordable for individual investors, reorganizing the long term increase in the company's share price. 20 to 1, huh? Wow, I got 20 shares now. Amazon board, yeah, I was gonna say this is a, I don't know, I was kind of, I was kind of interested in the fact they're doing it, or probably the perfect time considering for the last two years everybody's been buying more shit off of Amazon than they ever did before, because they couldn't go oh, to their God. neighborhood I, market. Because it was yeah, shit. Amazon's boom recently is insane. Com- it with the whole, you know, lockdown. Everyone's ordering. I order crap off of Amazon more than I want to admit, but I do it. Man, me because too. I mean, I also live up in you know almost butt fuck nowhere. So, um, but yeah, so it kind of makes it easier than having to pay for gas to go shopping these days for certain things. <laughs> oh, jeez! Well, you know, you bring up a good point. Now, Amazon is going to be increasing their Prime rate soon, anyway. Now, yeah. what's going to happen with the fuel situation? Now that we're going stupid, uber ridiculous with our per gallon gallon price on six fuel. bucks a gallon la it's county nuts just nuts and so how's shipping not going to follow suit it's going to have to exactly so, so shipping here's... is going to get a more expensive but <laughs> you know considering that i'm just paying for it to be brought here <laughs> instead of me making a trip out and then back right i'm still getting <laughs> you know a little bit better pricing doing it that way versus you know <laughs> anything else so it 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 kind of goes back and forth on whether or not you know if I'm out and I think of something I'll get it but I've since I think for about a year I actually have toilet paper shipped straight to my house. Oh wow! Because it was a lot simpler to do that then deal with all these idiots who bought it all out of the freaking stores. True. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just a lot easier. And I'm like, I, I think that's kind of convenient through that. Yeah. So, so the, the most amazing thing about gas prices last Monday, when I fill up, I fill up every Monday and it cost me five thirteen a gallon filled up today, $5 67 cents at the same gas station. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 598 yeah. over here. For, for radio. And last I heard, it's going to go, we will see the price increase of uh, another $40 per barrel, which is going to be trickled down to us over the next year, maybe year and a half. Yeah. I mean, at what point do we go take up Ukraine on that offer of free guns? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, man, that's crazy. Uh, the most amazing thing about this is how the politics are playing out I mean, is... Uh, how the right and left are playing it. One side's blaming Biden, and the other side's, his side is blaming blaming Putin. If you guys are interested, anybody out there who's just for the fascination fascination of politics, this is going to get very interesting really quick. Especially considering you have some war hawks saying this is going to be World War Three. Um, this it already has begun as World War Three, 
It's just that, like World War One and Two, we're just going to sit on the sidelines until it's basically we have to <clears throat> get in there. It well, really, and it's it, been since World War Two. That when when did Article Five become a thing with with NATO? With NATO? Day one, was that, I thought. Was it eighties, something like that. I thought when NATO was, I thought it was always been a thing. I thought it was one of the benefits well, when was, of joining. When did NATO become a thing? <sighs> oh, I have to look but up I mean, the exact date. John's Mister. Uh, yeah, I'd have to look that one up. I don't know it off the top but of my I head. Mean, it's it's one of those things where it's it's literally what it reminds me of is uh you know the way he's skirting around the Article Five thing is just like going up to your <clears> sister <throat> like I'm not touching you I'm not touching you I'm not touching you I'm not touching you. So from the latest from the latest I've heard, it's already been declared that one. One strike, even an accidental strike, is going to be considered an act of war. Now, I've only sure. seen that in one place. I don't know if it's true. But according to Wikipedia, the bastion of all knowledge, the history of NATO begins well, with the immediate aftermath of World War II. That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, the see, Allied countries the, just when the British, got together. <laughs> excuse me. When the British uh, diplomacy set the stage to contain the Soviet Union and stop the expansion of communism in Europe, the United Kingdom, France signed in forty-seven the Treaty of Dunkirk. And yada yada, an integrated military structure NATO was first established in 1950. It became clear that NATO would need its enhanced. So yeah, 50, 51, I think, is when it became the basically the formal. Yeah, and look, man, I I don't I don't care. I decided not to Monday morning <coughs> politician anymore because I don't I don't have the info that these guys do. I'm not I'm not <coughs> in the room, privy to the to the context of everything, and I don't have the time of day to try to figure it out. Uh, but you gotta have an opinion gotta have an opinion man uh but however you think biden is handling this fine the idea of of anybody not blaming putin directly for all of this shit is asinine to me yeah so you know but putin by putin uh biden's (laughs) response to it is irrelevant as far as i'm concerned so if if so from everything i've seen a little bit of red the whole gas prices and everything else is a combination of everything um, but this has been happening since the, f- the last time I heard this was really started. I think it was under Bush. Cause like, I, if I remember correctly, when they first started going after Ukraine, it was Bush, Obama, and then Trump. Cause one of, uh, one of Obama's people said, man, we should have, we should have, uh, done more on this. So this In is what way. Well, I, don't, would have been done I don't know. That's a good question. But this is 14 years in the making. And then there are some people thinking because of COVID that Putin went crazy. Because I guess, you know, he's he's a germaphobe and he doesn't trust anybody. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's always going to be, you know, those particular rumors. And, and, you know, look, can you can you trust wartime media on on any side? I don't trust media you know, in general, so that's that's. I mean, no kidding. You know, it's and, and but even even the independent news sources and whatnot. I mean, there's so much that is being purposely filtered, you know, through through specific channels or, or certain information that's that's being leaked and you know things like this. It's uh, it's one of those things we're never gonna we're not gonna find out what actually happened for 20 years. Well, it's just like, you know, for, for me, I, I always do what the, yeah, the yeah. old guy did who grew up in the hippity dippity 60s was, uh, <laughs> you know, don't trust anything. Just, you know, do your research and, you know, question everything. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, good, good old, good old old guy Rob hedged his bets was was the hippie with the gun. <laughs> That's right. We <laughs> walk softly and carry a big ass <laughs> stick. <laughs> well, no, he says he wasn't a hippie because he showered. Yeah, right. Yeah, you you were less crunchy. <laughs> yeah, I guess it all depends on the definition of a hippie, right? Yeah. Well, I can attest, yeah. modern hippies stink. It's all that patchouli oil. You know, I I could say the old hippies stink too. I didn't have to smell them, thankfully, but I'm sure they did. <laughs> oh yeah. Now yeah, I'm kind of mom, wondering what's the difference. Patchouli. Gosh. So what's the difference between the homeless and the hippie? That's what uh, somebody who's worked in retail most of his life always wants to know. Because they smell the same. Yeah. Yeah, the difference is they ask you for weed instead of money. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, he's got the a point there. there you I go. was in San Francisco, rolled up for, a, for a, a music festival, like hippies, you know, like hippies do. And as I'm walking up to the to the venue, it's just, you know, in this, this big, big park near the bridge. Um, <laughs> a bridge. And... Baybridge, yeah, and um, 
I'm walking up this this long, long, long park road, and here's hippies on the side of the road. Got buds? Got buds? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? One, yes. Two, <laughs> no. not for you, hippie. <laughs> Get away from me. Like, the the arrogance of that blew my mind. Got buds? <laughs> like, what? Like, it's like asking me if I had, like, cappuccino. Hey, do you have, do you have a spare cappuccino? Do you, this, do you have this awesome luxury item that would just really boost my spirits right now? It's not this thing that I need to survive, you know, get to the next day, feed my kids. Like, just blew my fucking mind. Hey, my you know what? But they wouldn't be doing it if it didn't work. It reminds, right. it reminds me of high trip, school. That same trip, I'm sorry, <clears throat> give me a second. That same trip, I saw three homeless dudes with a sign that said, starving like Marvin. Now, the first time I saw it, I'm like, nice. that's fucking good, bro. Here's a couple of bucks. Not 600 yards down the road, I'm like, that's the same fucking sign. That's a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it wouldn't see it three times if it didn't work. Well, yeah, because oh, exactly. the other guy was Marvin. Yeah, the yeah, other guy literally was Marvin. That's right. They just stole the sign, the sign, you know. And this is why all of them have dogs, because they're like, "Oh, look, I need food for my dog." Oh man, I know I'm a sucker for the dog one too. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, until they until well, they get the up, dog. until they get up, take their jaw, take their dog, hop into their BMW uh, S uh, sport utility vehicle, and drive away. Yeah, the difference though is I can tell that dog's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I the guy might be throwing, throwing, putting, putting one over me. That dog's legit. Like the fuck am I doing out here, man? <laughs> I I could have made better choices in life. That's right. I could have <laughs> See, this is, and, this is why the boss. House. This is why a Boston Terrier is the perfect dog because you can make them pout really easily. I make mine pout yeah. all the time. I mean, get, get get a Basset Hound and just <laughs> just droopy dogging it next to you the whole day. <laughs> Wait, I thought you hated Hanna Barbera. I love Droopy Dog. Oh, 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 now now you're now you're kind of moving backwards there. Well, no, uh, was Droopy Hanna Bar Hanna Barbera? <laughs> no, I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> okay, so which cartoon outfit was Droopy Dog? Yeah, which which one, Mister uh, Tex Stroke? Avery? Yeah, he was in there. With... It was it was, a, yeah. it was a Tex Avery cartoon. Yeah, 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 right, because he was in there with. Uh, um... Uh, uh, Bugs and, and even uh, uh, Roger right. Rabbit, I think. <clears throat> yeah. Droopy Dog cartoon. Droopy Dog was funny. That was yes, my. It was Tex Avery. Tex Avery nice. cartoons. 1943, awesome. Tex Avery. Wow. It's amazing mm -hmm. how old those cartoons were, man. I was, you know, brought up in the 90s. You know what I mean? I was a kid in the <laughs> early 90s. I would have swore that oh, shit yeah. was made the year before, you know? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, yeah, when you're a kid. It, yeah. Well, it's but there's a, there's a thing, though. There was no real change in the technology, you know, from no. the, you know, 40s to the 90s. You're still drawing mm -hmm. on stuff. Maybe you it's drew true. more frames, you know, and sped the, the, the camera up a little bit. But it was still pictures that were being broadcast, just do, drawings. Do you know what really affected them more than anything? The invention of high-definition television. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Once you and went that's from when people had to start changing the technology to meet the demand of uh once of the you, TVs. Once you went you ever from notice with high def stuff, everybody's skin looks terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> once you went from interlaced yeah. to progressive, well, it, was... it got horrible. Especially oh, yeah, like the quite can... a bit of it was the makeup. Oh yeah. It was so the on. makeup that you used to have to wear for television was a lot. Yeah. And then when they went high definition, they had a, just the amount of makeup and the compositions and all the other shit that went in all that makeup design yeah. to match and make it look like people weren't sickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And dying. Yeah, like, yeah, like it was a death mask and everyone was covering up syphilis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think they've gotten better. I don't really watch... Um, network tv much anymore or any live television much anymore I mean, but it looks know, like hey, it's gotten better just, from what i've seen in the past Yeah, even but. just the the movies and then you know things like that you can you can tell like like oh okay obviously they're going a lot more subtle somebody had to say hey listen we're gonna have to use an airbrush we can't just yeah. use regular makeup sponges Stop anymore. taking it on with a spatula yeah, yeah. <laughs> right well we've got to start 
getting subtle. The interesting thing in makeup is look up what they did for the black and white movies. <clears throat> if you, you take a look at like what the colors they used, they used funky shades because it looked better on black and white. Different in black and white. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like and Frankenstein it, was I mean, green. That's why I, I love mo- movie magic is it only has to look good from this angle. It doesn't yeah. matter what it looks like from right here. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, so all of that lighting, everything is so specific. Um, there used to be an old movie studio uh, semi close to here. There's a little back lot kind of an area, and, and you would see like the facades of the houses, and you're like, that looks like a nice little suburb. And then you hook around the corner and you see the little kickers coming out from just the facade, and you're like, wow, man, this is why I love movies. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it it's only like a- had to look good from that road right That's there. Right. You know, I always loved uh, and, and Blazing Saddles when they made the fake town. Yep. And they, they all come riding in like they're going to like destroy this town. And they're like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie set. Yep. Oh, no. so, that was a good one. That was so good. I, I always, that's, I always see, I've seen the post recently. I've named a movie that you've seen more than three times. And I'm like, it's always Blazing Saddles. I used to watch that at least three or four times a year. Yeah, oh, yeah. no doubt. No so doubt. I, I wanted to you know talk. what I watched last night that's been in heavy rotation for me is Groundhog Day. Right? Oh, I love that one too. I, Perfect movie. I don't have time to watch movies, but I, I have that one. <laughs> well, sooner or later, you're going to need to start your child's education, you know, so you get to rewatch all of that shit. So, yeah, Caddyshack, Blazing Saddles. Yeah, Spaceballs. Yeah, so, yeah, I was going to just to say Spaceballs, Young Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Oh, I hate Young Frankenstein. I don't think so. How dare you? How, How dare you, you sir? Young Frankenstein. I don't it's understand. Hysterical. So all the Bill and Ted's. Rob, listen. All no, no, no. There's, there's, there's only one. There's only yeah, one good no Bill kidding. and Ted's. The second one is adequate, and the third one, from all accounts, is. Horrible. You have to have him watch all of them. I haven't seen all of them. Why would I force him to? I saw the fr- I saw the first and second one in theaters. That's good enough. Dude, the amount of shit that your kid's going to show you that you're going to hate already. I mean, damn. I've watched you know, enough. You might as well make your peace with watching things you don't want to. I've I've watched Speaking enough. Which, Peppa... I still have yet to see Frozen. <laughs> you know, me too. Just let it go. Yeah. So I, I have. I, I want to talk about a product it. that I discovered um, via YouTube page that I thought was amazing, and it's it for was. dementia patients. It's an well, Alzheimer's so simple. It, no, it's an Alzheimer's dementia simple portable radio music player. Basically, you set the presets in the back, you lock the back, and you have four presets atop and on and off button in the volume. Super simple. It's 150 bucks. But if anybody out there has family members who love listening to the radio. But it's too the all they're all super too complicated for him now. This is perfect for him, mm. and it's the first of its product that I've kind that of, I've seen that actually looks fairly useful. You know, sadly that there is some truth to what you're saying because uh, I had a family member going through that, and the uh, remote control was beyond her ability. Yeah, it's something she'd been using, you know, for the last twenty years without a problem, and then it become became difficult. So. I, Great and, way of bringing the show down, John. Well, Thanks. hey, I just I want. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> but I thought it was cool. There's it also starts a little. Out funny though, when you find the remote in the refrigerator. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's and the they're... keys in the cat. Yeah, the keys yeah. in the cat. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. Wrong kind of lock. <laughs> I'm committed to that, to that imagery. <laughs> so. I I know Rob won't know the answer the won't know this band besides he used to listen to him. What is Jonathan Davis of Corn says previously the dumbest fucking track Corn ever did? Can can any of you guess what it is? The dumbest song they uh, ever did. I, I I can think of it. I, yeah, I just can't I, think of the name of it. That's a that's a. I I read that headline. I can't remember because I could could have cared, cared less. As I, <laughs> so it was the I track. All in the family. It was it was with That's Fred it. Durst of uh, Limp Biscuit, yeah. and they were all completely oh, gone out of their mind. Right. Yeah, it's I didn't like right. that. One. Yeah, was, I remember I was, that one. Okay. It yeah, was from Father Leader. I I actually think that track's shit. hilarious. Even to this day, I find it hilarious. I don't know why. Yeah, that's that. It was. <laughs> that was a weird one. That was a weird one. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember, I was trying to think. Of, yeah, it was the follow the leader one. It was the one with the little girl on the steps or whatever that yeah. shit on yeah, the album right. artwork. And then it was, yeah, I was trying don't, to remember don't, which don't, one. Uh, yeah, it was a good album, but yeah, that was a weird one. And so this is for Ryan. The star of Kiss of the Spider Woman and Body Heat has died at age 71. William, William Hurt. Hurt. <laughs> Damn it, I was really hoping it wasn't going to be William Hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's been your answer all along to everything. So now you got it right. Yeah, uh, man, I hey, you know, you broke the clock. Um, yeah, no, I, I dug me some William Hurt, man. He he was in uh, a, a lot of things, a lot of smaller things for me. I I probably didn't catch, you know, most of his, uh, um, you know, sort of like starring roles. I was, you know, the leading man stuff that was a little, you know, either before my time. And um, it hurts that you didn't pay attention to him more. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You know, he's been in so many, you know, like like little parts or supporting roles that it's hard for me to remember um, his so, like like big. Oh yeah, broadcast news. So he he has a total of 106 credits on IMDb. Yeah, man, he was always just that guy, dude, in so many damn different things. And his his acting credits go all the way. The first one was in '77 and Kojak. Oh yeah, Lost in Space. Yeah, the movie. Lost in Space, the new movie? The no, the the older movie from the nineties. It was one of those. It. Who did he play in Lost in Space? He was the dad. Oh shit! Yes. Yeah, he had a beard. He had that blonde beard at the time. By the way, that's I'd, a movie that I've. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. I love you that watch movie. A movie that you liked maybe when you were a kid, um, and you watch it one too many times, and it all of a sudden makes it stupid. Oh no! See, I I love that movie. I I love because of the 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 doctor. Uh, what's his the bad doctor on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Gary Oldman, man. I because he um, he Smith. yeah Doctor yep. Smith. He made that line solely based on the the line "Evil knows evil." He's the reason that movie is so good. Yeah, well, it's Gary Oldman. That dude was and William Hurt. Honestly, way better of actors than were required to make that movie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that was that him. Was not a good movie, by the way. Just it wasn't. putting that out there. Oh no, no, Alton don't. Space. When was it? Ninety six. When was that damn thing made? 90s. Oh, 94, yeah. 90, maybe even? 98. Yeah. Really? A little later than I thought. So this is how you know it wasn't a great movie. Everybody's friend Joey was in it. Matt LeBlanc. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Joey did a good job in the role yeah, that it was, was given to him. Cool honestly. I was hoping yeah, he was actually the one of the better roles. I wouldn't say yeah, the better actor. Bit, like clicked down over his face and shit. He could have. But that was a really good role for him. That could have, if he found more roles that were fitting, that could have turned him into an action star. Man, I really could have dug some Matthew uh, uh, Matt LeBlanc, LeBlanc. As, a, as an action yeah. star. Yeah, I, I could have too. That man. Yeah. yeah. After I, you know, I thought that movie was going to be absolutely terrible because he was in it. The movie was absolutely terrible, but not because he was in it. No. So, I mean, the, that says a lot. And I remember him in there and I'm like, you know, as Ryan just said, I could get behind him doing these roles. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, And he never did it. He never he did follow did, through on that. That was the only one, man. Yeah. Well, when, he, when you're making, know. when you're making friends money, let's be honest, you don't really have to do anything else. Yeah, and he probably took a lot of shit for doing a movie like that. And he was like, you know what? I don't need this shit in my life. Well, it's like yeah. the, it's like the, the lead singer of Aerosmith. The reason why he uh, he took the role on uh, that uh, that talent show. He's like, I wanted a house. Yeah, I mean, that, let's right. be honest. I would do the same thing if you got a, a a shit movie or a shit TV show, but they're offering you enough zeros. It's like, when do we start? <laughs> yeah, no, my my dignity is absolutely for sale. Really. <laughs> Oh, no doubt about it. And not as much as you might think. I mean, make me an offer. I'm just saying. <laughs> I got a wedding to pay for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he what you do is you go you, you go down to Vegas and you have Elvis marry you. Maybe this is where I should plug my OnlyFans. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Who? The loneliest OnlyFans ever. Hey, he doesn't call that thing on his face the tickler for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, TMI for Rob. That yeah, was yeah. that was that was that that was a tad bit much, even even for me. That was a. Uh... 
Then why are you blushing under that beard? Who's blushing? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, weird, 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 uh, little he was the one to talk about angel lust. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> oh, see, the other two don't know what that is. <laughs> angel lust? Uh-huh. I, I can cite a couple of biblical references. No, <laughs> man, that's a mortuary term. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I don't want to know. Angel lust <laughs> has to do with Ben and when, when they die, getting an erection. Oh, it's known oh, I see. As angel lust. Never huh. actually seen that one. I, well, I, 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 I call bullshit. I call bullshit. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we, I'm we, not there at we, the scene, you know, like when somebody right. dies and whatnot. Um, we both know but, that know, Ryan has ride the lightning a little. <laughs> <laughs> you need your oh, oh, I don't feel the need that to, one. To, to, you know, <laughs> to I feel respond. like it should go unsaid that I don't need to defend myself. Yeah, on yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to let him have it. <laughs> oh, Jonathan. Uh, anyways okay moving right along <laughs> but yeah i was saying the uh, the, the beard's coming a little thick for the charneys lately yeah. i'm just too lazy to shave i'm i'm digging the i'm digging the salt and pepper there buddy <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to the old guy or me <laughs> yeah, you. we got old guy has miracle on 34th street over here <laughs> with rob yeah <clears throat> got that right. it's just salt now there's no more pepper there well, I, well the, did you know that Matt LeBlanc was on a TV show called Man with a Plan from 2016 to 2020? No. He did 69 episodes. I did not. That, that Sorry, that surprises me. <laughs> well, there. I mean, like, like shit, I'm, I'm with uh, James. I don't really catch really a lot of network stuff anymore. Uh, I've been spoiled <clears throat> rotten by the HBOs of the world, man. I, oh, yeah. You, you want to know what I watch? I have YouTube. That's YouTube and some uh, Crunchyroll animes about as much as I have. So I got a total of like 40 minutes spread. Well, Crunchyroll is very on brand for you. So that tracks. Hey, Crunchyroll's awesome. The Sony bought them and Funimation. Funimation, however you call it. So now it has a bunch of titles. So it's an anime. It's an anime nut. It, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cheap. There's a too. lot of anime I got to catch up on. I'm tired <clears> of people giving me shit for for not having seen it. What? <laughs> Even I think that's ridiculous. I mean, we're you know, apparently we're talking about like the second I say to somebody I haven't seen Cowboy Bebop, everyone loses their goddamn minds. I, <clears throat> you know what? Oh, the, the only thing I would tell what? you on oh, Cowboy Bebop is I listening to the soundtrack. Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I'm surprised you even watched Cowboy Bebop, Rob. Yeah, how you? Hey. You I hear the you music's know, dope every now and then. I'll put something weird on. Rob, yeah. Rob, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob might like the anime. Um, but the soundtrack is the is the best thing about it. I actually love the anime, but oh, the soundtrack is freaking killer. The movie, the like TV the show, Netflix movie. I, I, I knew of the movie or the TV <clears throat> show, which got canceled recently. I knew of the TV show because of the anime. <clears throat> oh, I see. Okay, yeah. okay. But anyway, yeah, and it was not very good. The uh, the movie. So I, yeah, that's you, what I was right here. You guys brought up. Uh, since you guys brought up anime, there's a TV there's a, a TV show series called X Driver made from uh, 2000 to 2001. I thought everybody should take a look at it at some point. It's where all the cars are, uh, are driverless cars. And then because these cars go crazy, they hire people to drive normal cars to stop them, to stop all the automatic cars. Death race. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? The, wow. It's an interesting. I would. I would not. You would not be able to pay me enough to do that. <clears throat> uh, what? Well, uh, your dignity is for sale, so yeah, I'm so sure just, there is a I price. I mean, dignity, yeah, but I mean, you know, yeah, me, just just regular guy driver. <laughs> you good could driver, pay him enough. For pretty damn out. good driver <laughs> against automatic drivers all trying to kill me. Like, nah, I don't think I got a chance. <laughs> as there. as a guy who's <laughs> a, as a guy who's commuted for most of his life, I would have loved to have a car where I could just like sleep in for the forty five minutes to hour and a half it takes me to get to work. <laughs> that would be amazing. That may t happen someday, but everybody's getting away from computing. Nobody's working in an office anymore, other than your company. Oh, there's so many. There's there's so many people now. The companies are actually having issues because uh, was it Goldman Sachs? There was somebody, one of these big financial institutions, that said, "Okay, everybody back at work," and half the people said, "Okay, bye bye." We'll quit. Oof. Yeah. So that's no, a lot of companies are experiencing that. So 
since I wasn't watching the time, I did want to tell you guys, take a look at our sponsor. It's Audacity. That's O-D-D-A-S-S-I-T-Y. It's a game where dignity is overrated. Go to audacity.com. Use the, the, the use MADTRIO, all caps, all one, one, all one word for 10% off your final order. And make sure you go on your social media feeds and tell them the MADTRIO sent you. Thank you. Hey, I got to watch shout out for the probably the bravest woman in the world. So a uh, Russian news broadcast was on live here today. And there was an anti-war press protester that actually worked for the station that stood up behind the news lady reading the news in Russia, which of course is state sponsored. You got to read what they tell you you can read. And she stood up behind the, the lady anchor and held up a sign saying no war and that Russia's uh, should stop doing that. And of course, nobody will ever see her again. But yeah. But, you woman. know, no shit. I want to thank you all for listening. For the California pariah, the fat man, the old guy, and who the fuck is this Ryan Preston? As always, thank you for listening.